Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to sample a static mesh and get the texture data from it using PCG. I'll also show you how to get height data from it. And you can even use this technique to sample skeletal meshes if you'd like. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, I'm going to start off with creating a blueprint of type actor. I'll call it BP underscore dynamic mesh. And if I open that up, I will add a dynamic mesh component. And I will also add a static mesh variable. I'm just going to call it mesh static mesh object reference. And I'll expose it. Compile save. And now in the construction script, I'm going to uh, assign this static mesh to the dynamic mesh. So I'll grab dynamic mesh, and I'm going to get the dynamic mesh object from the dynamic mesh component. For the return value, I'm going to reset because I don't want to uh, <laughs> create more and more dynamic meshes on this dynamic mesh, so we have to reset it every time. And now that it's reset, we can copy the mesh from static mesh. And if you're going to sample a skeletal mesh instead of a static mesh, you would use a copy mesh from skeletal mesh node here. Just change your static mesh variable to a skeletal mesh and that's all you need. Okay, the static mesh asset, I'm going to use mesh, this static mesh variable that we created earlier. And then I'm going to do one final step where I set the dynamic mesh on the component. Hook that up, and the dynamic mesh will just keep flowing through here. Okay, and if I compile save, let's see what we've got. Drop this into the world. And let's find the static mesh. Here we go. There we go. Sphere, uh, let's see, this one's a nice one to see the results on. Great. So this is working. Now I can go on to creating the PCG blueprint that's going to actually sample this mesh. So I'll make it of type PCG blueprint element. And I'll call it bpcg underscore dynamic mesh sampler. And for debug purposes, I'm going to create the PCG graph right now as well, PCG underscore dynamic mesh. I'm going to open this up, and I will drop this blueprint in here. And I'm going to feed a single point into this from the actor data just to um, initialize the point data. Mode is going to be get single point, and I'll just drag and drop it in here. And next I'm going to create the PCG inside this dynamic mesh blueprint as well. PCG, and I'm going to select for the graph this dynamic mesh, compile and save that. And so now I see that there's a uh, object within the world that I can actually view the PCG data in, and when I'm editing this dynamic mesh sampler, I'll be able to debug it based on this data of the mesh that's in the world. All right, let's open this up. I'll start off by overriding the node title. I'll call it dynamic mesh sampler, and I will explode it to the library, category custom, compile and save that. And I'm done with the node title override, and I can set the execute function. I'll delete this parent execute, go to the input, and for the input, let me see, I want to get data, get typed inputs. The class is going to be PCG point data, which is going to give me an array of PCG point data. And there should only be one PCG point data in this, but even so, I'm going to do a for each loop because I feel it's a good habit to be in. And now I'm going to want this PCG point later. So I'm going to promote it to a variable. I'm going to just call it point. And the reason I'm doing this is because the iteration loop, let's uh, create an iteration loop now. 
does not take in PCG points data. It takes in PCG spatial data. So I'm just going to um, save the point data so I can use it inside the iteration loop later. And now let me move the return node down to the for each loop and hook it up. I'm going to make a local variable out of this collection. And this out data on the iteration loop, I'm going to add to this collection that we just created. And before the iteration loop is going to work, we need to assign the context. So let's get context off of the context pin. And now if I compile, there's one error, and that is that the current value of the in tags pin is invalid. So what we need to do is just make an array here, and we can leave it blank, and that's going to resolve the error. All right, so now we've got the basic structure set up, but this is not actually going to work very well because we still need to get the mesh data that we're then going to feed into the iteration loop. So for that, I'm going to add a sequence right here. I'll set the iteration loop to the one pin. For the zero pin, let me add a get context up here. And from this, let me see, what am I going to do? PCG temporary get original component. So this is going to be the component that it's a part of. And then I can get the owner. And let me go ahead and hook this original component up here. Now the owner is going to be the owning actor. So for this, I can cast to BP underscore dynamic mesh. And then I can use the function get dynamic mesh, call that on the dynamic mesh component. And this should be our dynamic mesh. We can uh, add a sampling node, a compute point sampling here. And that gives us a bunch of samples. We also have this options pin here. I'm going to make options. And for this, I'm going to set the sampling radius up a little bit and set the subsample density down. That's just going to make it a bit lighter on my computer, make a few fewer points. Um, the lower the sampling radius, the closer the points can be together. So while I'm developing it, I like to keep this a little higher. So now this is going to give us a bunch of samples. So let me uh, promote this to a variable. I'll just leave it called samples. And now I can debug it. So if you right click on this samples node, you can set toggle breakpoint. And then if I compile, it's going to run through the BP dynamic mesh that's in the world, which kicks off the PCG, which kicks off this PCG blueprint element. And then I can see if I hover over samples that it is working. Perfect. Now I'll just continue the execution, right click, toggle the breakpoint off. Now that we have samples set, we can set up the iteration loop a little more. So let me add this in here. I'm going to get samples, and samples is directly correlated to the amount of points that we've sampled. There's going to be one item in this array per point. So I just have to get the length of this. And then from that, I can drag it into the number of iterations. And the iteration loop is going to run once per point. All right, so now in the iteration loop, for, the, for each iteration, I want to get one of these sample points. So I'm just going to hook the iteration up to the get node on samples. And now I want to assign that to a point. And we've got our point right here. So get point. There should only be one point per with the way we've done this. So I'm just going to get point at index 0. And now I'm going to set members in PCG point. I'll hook the execution path up here. And I'm going to set the transform here, just to this transform. And now I'll return. And the out point will just be this struct out. And that should be everything we need. So let me go ahead and check out the PCG. And if I highlight this and press A to inspect it, we see a bit of data.
1,300 points. And if I turn on debug for them, well, this isn't quite right. So the bounds look a little bit off. Let me uh, see what's happening. Bounds min, negative 1,072. Bounds max, 992. If I check actor data, that's the bounds of the actor. So what I'm going to do here is go back to the PCG blueprint, and in members of PCG point, I'm going to modify the bounds min. If you're using a lot of points, you may want to set them to negative one to one. I'm using fewer points, so I'm going to just make them a little bigger. Negative five. Five. Negative five. And compile again, and there we go. We've got a bunch of points. Next up, we don't need this anymore as a reference. That was just kind of to demonstrate that everything's working. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that from the construction script. So I need a D mesh variable that's going to be the dynamic mesh. This one we can leave uh, private. You don't need to expose it. Set it to construct object from class. That's going to be a dynamic mesh. And hook that up there. And then we just need to copy the mesh from the static mesh. And if I get rid of this, hook that up here. There's one more thing we need to do. That's to go back into the PCG blueprint, into the execute. And instead of getting this dynamic mesh component, we can just do get dmesh and drop that straight into the point sampling node. And let me see here, I may need to select this again to get our points. There we go. We're getting our points and we don't have any dynamic mesh showing up in the world. I'm going to add a little more uh, customization right now. So in here, you see this make geometry script mesh point sampling options. I'm going to add this as a variable. So under the dynamic mesh blueprint, add a variable, point sampling options. And there we go, geometry script mesh point sampling options. I'm gonna call it options and make it public. And here I will also get this variable, get options. And I'll delete this options and hook it up to the options node. Compile, save. And now if I look in here, I can see that there are some options. So I can see what this does. Let me go ahead and select this again. There we go, it's a little more dense and I can set it back down to 20 sampling radius. Refresh it in here, and there we go. All right, so I'm not really liking this debug, so what I'm going to do is add a static mesh spawner here. I'm going to ignore this warning for now. We'll go out and correct it after I've created the static mesh. The mesh entry, I'm just going to use a sphere for now. Arcade Editor Sphere works, and let me go ahead and make it have no collision. And that's a little too big, so I'm going to add a transform points node first. Let's just set the scale to, let's do 0.1.1. Hook that up. And there we go, we've got a bunch of little spheres. One for each point. Okay, so now we need to fix this point metadata. I'm going to also add a little commenting. So first, initialize data from owning objects. And this will be, this will be used in the iteration loop. Okay, great. Now I'm going to add another node to this sequence pin, and I'll hook this iteration loop up to the second one. 
And let's uh, get this metadata working. I'm going to construct an object from class, PCG point data. Initialize that from data. And the data I'm going to initialize it from is this point right here. And off of this PCG point data, I'm going to make a mutable metadata node. Let's just hook that up there. And let me go ahead and promote this to a variable. We'll also be using this inside the iteration loop. And now let's see, I need to hook this PCG point data up to the out data. And if I Compile and save that. That has resolved the error. And so one thing you'll see is that on the get actor data, we've got the actor reference. And if I examine this dynamic mesh sampler, we still see the actor reference. So that shows us that the data is flowing through correctly. All right, so now that we have the data set up, let's go ahead and extract the UV data for each one of these points. In the PCG blueprint, if you go up here, you'll see on the compute point sampling, there's this triangle IDs output. We're going to promote that to a variable. You can leave it as triangle IDs. I'll organize this. And this is also going to be used in the iteration loop. So let me change it to these will be used in the iteration loop. And now in the iteration loop, I'm going to add a compute triangle barycentric chords node. So what this does is takes a mesh and a triangle ID, which uh, we've got right here, and a point, which we've got right here, and will tell us the barycentric coordinates, which we then can use to get a UV. Get interpolated triangle UV. And you can see here that we need a target mesh. So let me go back to the execute node and take this mesh right here. And I'm going to just promote it to a variable. Hook that up. Let me go ahead and just drop that variable right in here to compute point sampling. Clean things up a little bit. And in the iteration loop, let me grab dmesh and hook that up to the target mesh and the target mesh for the UV. Let's hook these up right in here. And let me move this on up. And actually, let me go ahead and promote this to a point. Promote to a local variable. I'm going to call it iteration point. I found that it works best to promote uh, your point to its own variable before working on it. Otherwise, it seems to you know, still grab the data from the original point. So iteration point is going to be the point that we're setting here. And iteration point is going to be the out point as well. OK, now let's move this up here. And I can go ahead and break this transform and use the location for the barycentric coordinates. Triangle IDs, I need to get index list item. And this index is going to exactly match the transforms. We're just going to drag this on into the index here. And the return index is going to be this triangle ID, which we're going to use in the barycentric coordinates, as well as in the interpolate 
triangle UV. Now, lastly, on the iteration point, let's go ahead and set this value to an attribute. Set vector to attribute. I'm going to call this attribute UV, and the value will be this interpolated UV here. And for the metadata, just grab this out metadata because we've already plugged it in there. Send it up and above everything. All right, and compile, save. And back in the execute, let's see, I'm going to add metadata. Create vector to attribute. Call it UV. Default value, let's just set it at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and hook that up. And now back in the iteration loop body, that's UV. All right, compile, save, and let's look at the piece G. We've got our UV values. All right, so what I can do here is take a simple material. I'll call it M debug material. Pop that open. Get texture. Texture sample. And hook that up to the base color. And for UVs, I'm going to get per instance custom data. 0 and 1, and append many to create a vector 2, and hook the RG up to UVs. For the texture, let's just uh, grab <laughs> something random that looks fine. Uh, sure, why not this analog hat? back in the PCG. Let's go ahead and assign an override material. Debug material. M debug material. Great. And now we need to add some per instance custom data. So instance data packer type, I'm going to select PSG instance data packer by attribute, and now I can add the attributes that I want. UV.x and UV.y. And you can see a warning that it's not in the metadata, but if I look at this, it obviously is. So instead of UV.x and Y, I'm going to copy the attribute UV.x to UVX. Do the same thing with UVY. And hook that on up. And I'll point this data at UVX without the period and UVY. And now if I look at the sampling, hey, there we go. We've got some data coming through. All right, let's add on to this some more. I have a farmhouse mesh that I can use, Oop. and there we go. You can kind of see that it's a farmhouse, but um, that is not at all the right texture. It should look a little more like this. So I can handle that by going to the dynamic mesh. And this is just one method of doing it. I'm going to make a texture that I can assign to the material that we're using. <coughs> so actually in the debug material, let's go ahead and make a uh, 
texture object. We'll promote that to a parameter and call it base texture. Now go ahead and save this. And this object, I'll, I'll leave it at this for now. Now if we look at sampling, it's this other texture that we've got. Back in our dynamic mesh, I'm going to create a dynamic material instance. Let's add a material instance here on the debug material, mi underscore debug material. And the parent will be mi debug material. And on this material instance, I will set texture parameter value. The parameter is going to be base texture. And the value, I'm going to add a variable texture. And the value type will be texture. And open that up. And now I'm going to set the value of this texture parameter to texture. Let's add a sequence here. And now that we have this, we need to be able to assign this instance material. So I'm going to get the object path string, and I'm going to promote this to a variable. I'll call it material path. And I'm going to set that here. Compile, save. Now back under the PCG blueprint, I'm going to add a string attribute. Let's call the attribute name uh, material path. And the default value I'm going to set to right up here under this dynamic mesh, get material path, and I'll hook that right up here. Compile and save this. We've got an error. Self is not metadata, so let's go ahead and hook the metadata up here. And now under dynamic sampling, let's go ahead and assign a material a texture. Do, 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 do. Let's set it back to this analog hat. And now under the PCG, we'll actually do something with this uh, value here. So if I look at the uh, dynamic mesh sampler, I see material path. Under the static mesh spawner, we have this option under Let's see, not override materials. By attribute material override. So check that. And we can go ahead and remove this override material. We're going to add one element to this, and that's going to be material path. Save that, and back under material sampling, hey, we've got a value. And if I change this to farmhouse, we've got uh, values on the farmhouse. And if I duplicate this, well, uh, it's not quite working right, so let's actually fix that now. Back under the PCG, I'm going to add a copy points node, and I will copy it to the target being the get actor data node, and the dynamic mesh sampler data is going to be the source. And just to hook that on up again, and now it is giving us individual points hooked up to the individual house. Great.
let's uh, make sure everything's working fine. Um, sure, whatever. Uh, that doesn't work very well. Flipbook. All right, we've got individual textures piping out to individual static meshes. The last thing I'm going to go into is how to add height data into this. I'm going to assign planet Earth 1 as this mesh. Let's make it a little bigger. And planet Earth 1 texture 2 I think will work well. And let's go ahead and uh, fix this size here. I'm going to go ahead and set absolute scale on these points and set them to 1, 1. And let's set them back to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go. And now for this little Earth dynamic mesh, I can go ahead and set the options to give me a bit more sampling. Sample radius 5. And let's go ahead and sample radius 2.5. scale this down. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to add um, some height offsets to this thing. And I have in textures a height map. It's grayscale. You can't see it very well, but if we go over here, you can see that uh, there's this band of mountains on Africa, and there's a bit of ocean here, some uh, less high areas, technical term, and uh, we can use this to offset the points accordingly. So I'm going to set the texture on back to the normal texture, and now within the PCG, I'm going to add a get texture data node. And I'm going to set it to that height map. And you can see an error here. It's an unsupported texture format. Ensure MIP map generation is disabled and sRGB is disabled. So let's go ahead and do that. Under here, I'm going to duplicate this texture just so that I'm not modifying the base one. And I'm going to call it underscore PCG. And if I open that up, it can do a few things. First, ensuring it's in the proper format. I'll change the compression settings to user interface 2D. Then let me check uh, the MIP map, MIP gen settings from texture group. Let's just set that to no MIP maps. And lastly, let's check sRGB. And if I scroll down, sRGB is already off. Great, so I'll save that, close it. And let's go ahead and update the texture data set it at this new one, and it looks good. Okay, so now we have that. Let me go ahead and select the object and inspect it. And we see here that uh, we've got 25 points. So what I'm going to do here, modify these points so that they're a square that we can project these original points onto based on their UVs. And the way I'm going to do that is zero out these points. So instead of going from negative 900 to who knows what, I'm going to make them go from zero to 256, which will basically give me a 256 by 256 sample resolution. And I'll also update the UV points to go from zero to 256 so they match. So to do that, I'm going to set the scale of the texture data to 128 by 128. And that is because it's going to go from negative 128 to 128. And I'll check Use Absolute Transform. And now if I set the textile size down to 1, it's going to have 1 point per unit. And you can see here that the position x and position y go from negative 127 on up to 127. So if I just add 128 to the location, x and y, it's going uh, 255 at the top and 0 at the bottom.
So now this data is zeroed out to 0 to 256. And this UV data is going from 0 to 1. So I just multiply the UV by 256, and it's all going to line up. So let's do that now. Multiply UV, and I'll create an attribute. I'm going to call this resolution, and I'm going to make it 256. And I'll multiply UV by resolution, and output target will be UV. Actually, I can save a step right here by output target being position dot x, y. So let me look here and inspect. And now I see position x, y, 255, 1. And there we go. It's, it's looking good. These are the right ranges. So now that I have that, the actually, let me uh, go ahead and debug. I've got a plane right down here. It does have some height data in it, but that shouldn't matter. And if I inspect the texture data, I see another plane. It's flat. And the XY is lined up on both of these. So I can simply project one onto the other, and I should have my height data. So let's, uh, let's save, because uh, this sometimes results in crashes. I'm going to add a projection node. The target is going to be the get texture data, and the in is going to be this math node. I'm going to uncheck positions and rotations and check project colors. And if I inspect this, I see that my colors are uh, all between 0 and 1, and they're all identical because this is a grayscale image. So now all I have to do is transfer the data back and I will have my um, data. So for that, I can use a transfer attribute node. The target is going to be this copy points node, and the source is going to be this projection node. And you see here that it throws an error, only supports spatial to spatial data or point to point data. Well, I'm going to handle that by adding a two-point node here. And I will just plug that into the transfer attribute. And if I inspect it now, I see that the color is not yet transferred, because I need to set the source attribute and target attribute. And there we go. Now the color is the values that we previously had but we have our original positions. So now if I drag this into the transform points, and I just crashed, so it's a good thing that I saved earlier. All right, so we have our color attribute now, so we need to actually move the points. To do that, we need to get their normal, and then we will multiply their normal by this color, uh, add, multiply them by a magnitude, to determine how much we want them to move, and then we'll add that back to the position. So for that, I can add a multiply node. I'm going to take color.r. I could just do color because all of these are the same, but I'll just stick with one in case maybe my alpha channel um, is separate from the colors. You only really need to use one channel for the height data. I'm going to multiply it by something that I just learned, rotation.up, and I will make that be offset. Next, I'll multiply offset by a value that I'm going to call magnitude, and I will output it to offset. And for magnitude, I'm going to create an attribute, and I'm just going to call it magnitude. And I'll set it to 100 by default. And lastly, let's add all of this back to position. Hook everything up. And if I look back at the points, there we go. They are all offset. I can expand this a little bit and increase the sampling. And there.
we've got all of our points. They have some height data, and uh, yeah, they're looking good. And if you look at the house, everything is going outwards, which tells me I have calculated the normals correctly. All right, so that's how to add height data to this dynamic mesh sampling. Now, if you are only doing a sphere, so this is pretty much just, you know, planets, um, you can see right here that there are some lines at the uh, connection of polys. So a way to eliminate these lines would be to calculate the normal a different way. And that is to simply take the center point of the sphere and the outer point of the sphere, subtract the center point from the outer point, that's your direction away from the center of the sphere. You then normalize that, and there you go. So I'll just uh, quickly show you how to do that. So right here is where we first determine the offset. And what I'm going to do is a subtract node. Position, position, and I'll call this normal. And the position I'm going to subtract from it is the get actor data, which is the center for this entire thing. And now from here, I can vector op normalize. I'm going to ve normalize the normal vector. So beforehand, the normal is, you know, this negative 100, 1200. Afterwards, it's negative 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Perfect. So now I have the value that's the same equivalent as this rotation dot up. So I just need to multiply color dot r by uh, normal, and I'll have my offset. and I can unhook this node and hook this trio of nodes up. And there we go. We've smoothed out those lines that were on the sphere. So, you know, for regular objects, you should definitely use their normal, but for perfect spheres, I suggest just calculating the normal from the center of the sphere. Enjoy.